Gather around, everybody. This is a rescue operation at the only hospital left in this area. Along with having a lot of food and medical supplies, its power is still running, thanks to the backup generators in its sub-basements. It is, however, being held by the burners. And along with that, they've taken one of our own cap. This mission is two-pronged. We must defeat the entrenched burners while freeing Rachel unharmed, if possible. A daunting task already. Our group has been running low on a lot of things, and our current camp can no longer provide us with safety. Therefore, this mission is all or nothing. I am authorizing usage of all of our resources and manpower to do this. However, we must not only take the hospital, but have enough people and supplies left over to hold it. Initial scouting reports indicate there are approximately 40 to 50 burners on site at any given time. They have snipers that move room to room, keeping a vigil on the open space that surrounds the building. Other men with heavy armor, flamethrowers, and lighter armored men with AKs roam the outside of the building. We are unsure how many patrols are on the inside and on what floors and the front entrance is barricaded with piles of cars that the burners have set up making a makeshift barricade. This makes entry directly into the building difficult, but not impossible. Next to that is where these bikers keep their most prized possessions, their motorcycles and their war buggies. The building is surrounded by flat parking lots and beyond that, thick trees. The burners are a large motorcycle gang who, before the dead rose, were obsessed with crimes involving arson and other fire-related things, often using it to get revenge or intimidate witnesses. Now they're even more fanatical, believing that fire is the only way to stop the spread of the virus or this infection. They will mercilessly burn anything or anyone in their crusade to stop the infection. We are going to try to use their love of fire and their fervor against them. This operation will begin at 2200 hours. I've created some flash suppressors out of some old PVC pipe we had laying around the depot. I'm better trained than their snipers. Their snipers will likely sit in those well-lit hospital rooms, steadying their weapons on the windowsills, creating very obvious silhouettes. Easy prey. Along with some green blankets or anything I can make a ghillie suit out of, it should keep me hidden. The sound of gunfire should bring the heavier patrols out of the parking lot. They will think they're hunting a lone gunman. Josh, I remember being pretty pissed off at you for spending an entire supply run to raid a toy store and a sports equipment depot. I appear to have been wrong in this assessment, as it will come in handy here. Josh will use the toys and the sports equipment to harass the targets. The goal is to keep the burner patrols in the parking lot, but we must do so in a way that keeps them from pushing forward too far or falling back. Their temper should at least keep them from falling back without a good reason. Those tennis ball launchers filled with pool balls or other random debris ought to be a good balance between annoying and threatening. Paul, I know I usually have you leading the hunting teams but you're going to be needed to help on this op. Your hunting teams are to use your bows to silently keep zombies off all the other teams and kill any burners who stray too far from the group to thin their numbers. Pick your shots carefully, we can't have them catching on to this too early. If they discover there's more of us out there than just the lone gunman they think, who knows how they'll react. Once we have the burners completely focused forward on trying to find where I'm at, Josh will use an RC car he found and rig it with explosives and drive it into their vehicle depot. This should get the attention of the patrols inside, plus piss them way off. Teams in flanking positions will open fire on the burner patrols in the parking lot. You are to prioritize the flamethrowers. If we can damage their tanks and cause at least one explosion, the fire and the debris should make it harder for any teams that come out onto their barricades to fire on the smaller groups out front. You have to remember, we're completely outnumbered here, so we have to try and use the terrain to our advantage. All of this, however, is meant to be a distraction to draw as many of the burners outside the hospital as possible. 
This is so Team 2 can get into position. Zach, you will be heading up Team 2. You will take Mick, Matrix, and Patrick into the electrical service tunnels two blocks to the east of the hospital. They will be cramped for the four of you, but you must make your way along them until you reach the access to the hospital's sub-basement. The explosion from us detonating the burner's rides is your cue to breach into the basement. On the first floor, you must use as much stealth as possible. The burners have patrol on all floors of the buildings, but hopefully our attack will draw most of them out onto the barricade. If you alert them, they will be able to withdraw back into the hospital. You will either need to retreat or be overwhelmed by their numbers. Once on the second floor, you may need to get creative to deal with threats. Shooting oxygen tanks, fire extinguishers, or hitting the sprinkler system should buy you a tactical advantage if you get pinned down by burner patrols. But try to remember that we want this as our new home, and if the structural integrity gets compromised too much from the combat, this won't be possible. They are likely keeping Rachel on the third floor. I have scattered reports that their leader, Garvin Holloman Holt, has been coming and going from the building. If you run into him, do not engage without backup. Hollow Man has burns on 85% of his body, deadening his nerves. He cannot feel pain, and I'm not sure he can feel fear. He is not above burning himself or his crew worse to kill you. As if you needed more reason not to face him without help, he is also 6'6", and I hear he's quite the saddest. You've been warned. Once you have Rachel, you will not exfiltrate the way you came in. Rather, you will help us catch the barricade defenders in the bang range. Caught between us and you, they should fold quickly enough, allowing our outside teams to scale up the barricades and sweep the building in security. You've also been given a flare gun. Should you become severely trapped, fire it out the nearest window. We've set up a concrete truck that can be rammed through the barricades as a means of immediate entry. This will, however, compromise our ability to hold the first floor in case of an attack of any kind should we then choose to hold the hospital. If Team A is forced to retreat, you will be on your own, and must exfiltrate any way you can, or be slaughtered. This mission is all risk, and possibly all reward, if we can pull it off. Eat a full meal and rest. We will begin very soon.